World War II and the Homefront, a digital story by Samantha Sanders. Samantha and Courtney were visiting their grandmother one sunny afternoon when they noticed a very old scrapbook sitting on the table. Hey, Grams, what's that? asked Samantha. Oh, that's my scrapbook I kept when I was a young woman and your grandfather was in the war. I've been meaning to transfer everything to a sturdier book. Courtney picked it up gingerly and started flipping through the pages. She pauses on a photo of a young man in uniform. That's right. Gramps was drafted for the war, wasn't he? She asked. Yes, that's him there in his uniform. After Pearl Harbor, thousands of men volunteered for service. But despite overwhelming support for the war, most GIs entered the military through what they called the Selective Service System, or the draft. And what exactly is the draft, Grandma? The draft is basically a form of compulsory military service to make sure we have enough people to fill the ranks in the case of a natural emergency or a war. Young men were required to sign up with selective service, and then they would be randomly selected or drafted into service. Samantha was confused as she looked at a photo of women in uniform. I know women weren't drafted back then, so how did these women serve? What's going on in this photo, she asked. They were pilots. You're right, women weren't drafted, but for the first time they were able to be more than clerks or nurses. In World War II, they received full status. Forces like the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, or WAAC, were created, and women made significant contributions to the American war effort. For example, women pilots flew support missions for the Air Corps during World War II. Courtney piped in. I know you didn't serve, but didn't you enter the workforce? Before the war, most women stayed at home, but when all the men entered the service, they needed women to step up, right? Yes. During the Depression, women were discouraged to take a man's place, but during the war, they were urged to replace their husbands, fathers, and brothers. The government even started producing these posters, which were basically propaganda, encouraging women to do their part by working in factories or war plants. This one shows Rosie the Riveter. She was basically the face for women in the workforce. Samantha held up another poster. Is this another propaganda poster? This one isn't about the labor force, though. It says something about buying war bonds. What are those? Well, the government needed money to fund the war. In addition to raising the income tax and sending it to millions more people, the government also had to borrow money. Patriotic citizens bought billions of dollars worth of war bonds to finance the war effort. Not only did the bonds generate capital for the government, but it also made citizens feel involved and useful in the war effort. Meanwhile, Courtney was holding a small booklet. Hey Grandma, what's a ration book? Did this also have to do with the economy and financing the war? Yes, Courtney, great inference. The government set up a system of rationing to help hold down prices and manage shortages of scarce products. Each family got a supply of ration tickets, which were in those books. They were only allotted a certain amount of goods like meat, butter, and gasoline. I remember people complaining about the inconvenience, but I always thought it was better to have some of those goods than none at all. And what have you got there, Sam? Oh, just another poster. Ooh, Grams, did you have a victory garden? Why, yes, yes I did. We had kind of a shared garden for our whole street. It was a way for us to get more food. We spaded up lawns and planted our own gardens with fresh fruits and vegetables. It really showed a sense of community. We'd grow food for the whole neighborhood and share the wealth. That way, we didn't feel the sting of rationing food items as much because we were supplementing our own pantries. Courtney looked thoughtful. You know, I never really thought about it, but Grams, you're like living history. We've been studying World War II in class, and it's been the first history lesson we've been able to actually touch, see, and hear about firsthand. Thanks so much for sharing your scrapbook with us. Do you think we could bring it into class? Of course you can, my dear. And when you're older, I'll even show you some of my photos from the hippie era.